In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to the terrain system in UDK. If you want to make an outdoor level that you can explore, terrain is practically mandatory. Now here I am inside of an additive level, so let's just go ahead and go to File, New, and choose Additive, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. I'll go under Tools and choose New Terrain. This is a really easy way to create a terrain, just a quick wizard. I'm going to set the patches in X and Y to 64 by 64. Now let's click next. Now here inside the appearance, our terrain layer setup is not going to have any options in it, which is perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and click finish. And we get a sheet of terrain, which by default has the null material on it. Now I'm not going to worry too much about the material just yet. We'll actually get to that here in just a moment. For now, let's go ahead and take the uh, perspective viewport and we'll maximize that. And let's immediately jump into terrain editing mode. Now this is located in the toolbox on the left hand side. And as soon as you click this, you get the Unreal Terrain Edit window. Now this window has a lot of different buttons. It can look a little scary for just a moment, but it's really not so bad. The Terrain Editor is a brush-based system that allows you to literally sculpt the surface of a terrain using a brush-like interface. You can also paint texture directly onto the surface. We'll show you how to do both of those. Now for starters, let's just talk about changing the shape of our terrain. However, we're not going to be able to see the results of any sort of terrain sculpting unless we have some form of light. Right now we're currently in unlit mode, which on the solid colors of our current terrain uh, material, it's going to be really hard to tell what we're working on. So I'm going to jump out of terrain edit mode and go back to camera mode over here in the toolbox for just a moment. Let's open up the actor classes browser. So here I am inside the content browser. I'm going to switch to the actor classes tab. I'm going to expand light expand directional light and I'm gonna grab a dominant directional light let's close out actor classes right click dead in the middle of the terrain and choose add dominant directional light here I'm gonna slide this up into the air and if you hadn't caught on this is a huge sheet of terrain we're looking at right now with the light though we're going to tap the spacebar to get the rotation widget and we're just rotating this in one of the axes it doesn't really matter which as long as it's not the x-axis just to get some kind of oblique elongated shadows. Now with just that done, I'm gonna switch back over to terrain edit mode. Now let's start off by jumping over into the tool group and we have several different tools, not all of which are available to us at the moment, but let's go ahead and click on the paint tool. It's dead center in the topmost row. Next, we need to control our brush. Currently the strength is set to 100, which is okay if a little high, but our radius is set to zero. So we'll crank that up about halfway across and give it a little bit of fall off as well. As soon as we do that, if we mouse over the terrain, you'll notice we get this circular shape, and this is actually our brush. So I'm going to move the camera up into the air and pull back. Now, if I hold down the control key and drag across the surface, check it out. I can create a raised area. If, while holding control, I drag with the right mouse button instead of left, I can push back down. So already we've got a free form surface that we can start to sculpt. If you want to pull up a mountain, you can pull it up. We can push it back down. And there's some other tools that we already have that we can really make use of. For instance, over here inside of our tool group, we can grab the smooth tool, which is located dead center in the second row. Hold down control and left mouse drag, and you can see how that starts to smooth out some of the jagged surfaces of our terrain. And we could grab, say, average, which is right next to it. And what this is going to do is create an average location for all of the terrain vertices that are found underneath our brush. Now, when I say vertices, how do you know how many vertices you have? Well, there's a couple of different ways. If we take a look over here at the view settings, we can switch on the wireframe of our brush. And here you can actually visualize all of the vertices that make up your terrain. Now, I have seen on some computers where showing your wireframe can slow things down, so a lot of that's gonna depend on your graphics card. You can turn them on or off. Also underneath, you can set the wireframe color to any color of the rainbow that you happen to like. Now, let's go ahead and switch this back off. A Couple of other things I wanna show you before we talk about adding some texture. You also will have the properties of your terrain. If we open this up, we can expand terrain at the very bottom. There are several different settings here, and there's one in particular that I really want to point out 
right away, and that is Morphing Enabled. And this is off by default, but I just want to show you what it does. Let me create a really high surface here. So I'm just going to switch over to my paint tool that we were using earlier, hold down Control and left drag. And I'm just going to build a really high raised mountain. And that's just by holding down the left mouse button. So this really wicked kind of mountain range setup. Now here inside my viewport toolbar, let's take the camera movement speed and I'll kick that really high. Now I'm using the right mouse button and the W A S D keys to move around. And I want you to watch the terrain as I move away. Now, if it's not quite apparent what's going on, it's getting simpler and we can zoom in to really see this. So I'm while still holding down the right mouse button, I'm tapping C until we get really close. Now notice, the terrain keeps changing shape the closer I get. This is because the terrain system works off an automatic level of detail system. If we go underneath the properties, we can take the morphing enabled and switch that on. Now this takes a second to calculate when you switch it on. Now if we close, if I do the same thing, just hold down the right mouse button. As a matter of fact, let's go to camera mode. If I hold down right mouse and start to fly away, what's happening is we're steadily changing the shape. Instead of just snapping from one shape to another, we're morphing. So I'm going to slow down the camera speed. I'm going to zoom us in and then slowly fly toward the terrain. And as we get closer and closer, what you're going to notice is the shape of the terrain will actually change. Now, I'm getting a little on the impatient side, even though we are getting something. Let me speed up my camera just a little bit more. And there, you can see that mountain starting to kind of grow up and change its shape. So the question is really, would you like this to pop in or actually have some morphing involved? If the popping becomes really apparent as you're flying maybe around in a cicada or something like that, you may want to take a look at morphing your terrain. Now, so far, that's a look at just changing our elevation, but currently at the moment, our terrain looks really boring. So over here inside the content browser, we have, or I have set up for us, a terrain package. So here's terrain demo. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, if, if you add anything to your terrain from the content browser, it is absolutely crucial that you remember to fully load the package. So we're going to fully load this. And I have two materials in here. We have matte underscore grass and matte underscore rock. These are two very simple materials that were created from textures that already exist inside of UDK, inside the UN terrain package. So you can see we just have a simple normal map. We have a specular power that's just set to 5. We have a texture sample that's being multiplied by 0.75 power, uh, powering specular. And then the texture sample itself is powering diffuse. If we jump over to matte rock, we have a very similar setup using a rock texture from the same package as well as a normal map. Okay, so with just these two materials, let's talk about how we can get these applied to our texture so we can start painting on areas of grass and stone. So I've got the matte grass selected. I have fully loaded my package. Let's go back into terrain editing mode. Now here inside the layers panel of our terrain edit window, we already have our height map. Now the height map itself is a texture. As we're creating these raised and lowered areas of our terrain, all we're really doing is, is editing a grayscale texture such that white and brighter areas are raised spots and darker areas are lowered spots. I'm going to right click in this area and choose new terrain setup layer from material and choose auto create. Give that a moment to process, and we get TLS matte grass, and we already have grass applied to our terrain. As a matter of fact, if we wanted to, we could switch over to camera mode, right-click, and choose play from here. And our lighting needs to be rebuilt, but we actually have a mountain that we could run around on. Now, when you rebuild your lighting, you will get rid of these really you know, super harsh shadows, but at the moment, I don't have a light mass importance volume. This is strictly a terrain-only demonstration. Okay, so we've got some grass down, and that's all well and good, but more often than not, you're going to want some sort of variation in the textures applied to your terrain. So let's go back into terrain editing mode, and let's also add our rock material. So back over here in the content browser, Let's jump back up to our terrain demo package. I'm going to select matte rock, close the content browser, right click once again and choose terrain setup layer from material auto create. And this creates a new layer 
for the matte rock. However, we don't see anything by default. The reason is we haven't painted an alpha channel to expose where that rock is going to be visible. So to do this, all we have to do is select our matte rock, and you have to know in advance the way that this layer list is being read. It starts up here at the height map, then on top of that we have the grass, and then on top of that we have the rock. So it's kind of starting from the top and working its way down. Now, with the paint tool selected here inside the tool group, notice I also have a little bit of radius, a little bit of fall off, and some strength. I've got our matte rock selected. I'm gonna hold down control and left drag. Now it takes a second the first time you do it for it to kind of calculate that you're painting. And there we go. Now we can paint stone right on the surface of our terrain. If we control and right mouse, we're erasing. And this is a behavior that you'll find in just about every single one of the terrain tools that control left mouse will have one function and control right mouse will have the opposite function. So you can get used to that. Now let's pull down the radius of our brush and we'll pull down the fall off as well. Actually, let's boost the fall off just a little bit. Find just that happy medium. And then here on the side of our mountain, we can add a little bit of rock. And the whole idea here is that you can add whatever material you like only in the areas that you want to see it. So now if we right click once again and choose play from here, give that a second to compile our textures, and we have stone here, and grass over here. Now granted, the example that I'm putting together right now looks very, very simple, and I don't mind warning you that if you want really nice looking terrain, it's gonna be the result of really working with your surface. Good looking terrain takes time, and there's a, a lot of, there's a, a really huge artistic side to it all. Now let's take a quick look at the tools that we have here at our disposal. Just kind of starting up at the top, we have the Add Remove sections. This is going to allow you to add and remove rows of patches on your terrain. Now, you might recall we had 64 by 64 patches. Uh, we can add and take those away. Control and left mouse will add. Control and right mouse will remove. Now, next to this, we have the Paint tool, which you've already seen me use. If we have the Height Map selected, this will raise and lower areas of terrain as we drag with left and right mouse, respectively, so we can dig in a trench with right mouse, we can raise a raised area by control dragging with left mouse. Now moving from here, we have the paint vertex tool. Let's give a quick demo of what this does. If we switch over to this, now I have the height map selected. As I control left drag, I'm selecting vertices. As I control right drag, I'm deselecting vertices. Now watch this. If I make a selection of vertices, I can hold down control and alt and drag with the mouse to manually lift those vertices and put them back down. So I have some manual motion ability using paint selection. Now here's the flatten tool. What this does is this takes the elevation where the brush actually starts painting and it flattens out everything you paint over to that point. So if I go all the way down here to ground level, hold down control, and now I'm left dragging, notice I'm just carving in a flat valley. However, if I start up here on this mountain and hold down control and start left dragging, it'll start raising points to match that elevation. So now we're kind of creating a wall very, very quickly. Now next to this, we have smooth. Now this is pretty obvious what this is going to do. If I hold down control and left drag, we're just smoothing. Be aware if you hit control and right drag, you are anti-smoothing. You're roughening a surface up, which can be useful a little bit just for, you know, some kind of randomization, but generally you're just going to be control left dragging. So you can use your flatten to get kind of a wall surface and then smooth it back out to get rid of some of that blockiness. Now next we have average. This will just give you the average location of the vertices underneath the brush. So notice as I paint, things are getting generally flatter with some raised areas. You also have a random noise. This does exactly what you probably think it does. It's just going to apply kind of a random value as you paint. So it starts to get really noisy too as you have a whole lot of strength. So if you pull your strength down, you just get a little bit of vibration. So it's nice to use along with a little bit of smoothing if you want just kind of a nice rolling, kind of random looking uh, rolling hill. Now, moving on from here, we have visibility. This allows you to show and hide sectors of your terrain. Now, this is really important and easy to overlook. If we control left drag with visibility active, we're taking entire sectors of our terrain 
and making them disappear. Now, why would you ever want to do that? Well, if your sectors were a lot smaller, then you could use this to cut away parts of your terrain. Let's say if you wanted to make a mountain base, say in the side of this mountain, you could delete out... Actually, maybe those are a little big, right? Maybe down here. Just delete out this section of the terrain and then stick a static mesh here in the side of the wall. Now, the cool thing about it is if I jump into the level and choose play from here... Currently, you see we're crawling around all over our mountain. However, visibility affects our collision. So here you see I'm shooting the floor and everything's working just fine. But over here, if I shoot, we just recede out into nowhere. So if I step into this hole, we fall. So if we filled this in with a static mesh of, say, a cave or maybe a great big garage door, we could use that as a way to get our terrain out of the way in order to have something that actually goes down underground. It's also useful if you have parts of terrain that are underneath static meshes that will never render. You can go ahead and hide those away, and it'll keep things nice and efficient. Now, moving on from here, you have some texture controls. You can pan, rotate, and scale textures. Just watch out, because after you do this, you've got to recompile the texture to see the result. So it's not the most interactive tool in the world. Now, continuing on, we have split X and split Y. This allows you to split the terrain into two separate terrains in the X and Y direction, respectively. So control and left mouse will split on the highlighted edge. So if we switch over to this, I'm not actually going to split, but you can see how we're actually getting a highlighted edge. If we control and left mouse, we'd just be kind of slicing like a great big cutting laser. And we also have merge. So if you have made a split and you want to merge your pieces of terrain back together, this is how you do that. You also have orientation flip. If we take a look at our wireframe once again, you'll see that basically we have a whole lot of triangles. And if your triangles aren't oriented in the way you like them, and if you're just not getting the shapes that you want, you can flip the orientation of those triangles. So control left mouse will rotate them one way, control right mouse will rotate them the other way. You have full control over how your deformations are taking place. Now moving over here to the settings group, you have per tool. This checkbox allows any settings that you change to only be applied on a tool-by-tool -tool basis instead of globally to all tools. So it's really just a question of how you like to work. Scale is going to apply just to the Paint Vertex tool. So if we switch over to Paint Vertex, uh, suddenly scale is going to lift up. This will control how far your selected vertices move, and you already saw me demonstrate that. Soft Select will apply to Paint Vertex as well. Uh, we didn't have that on before, so let me turn off our wireframe. And you'll notice as I control left drag, you can see what I have selected. I'm going to control right, uh, right drag and hide those away. If we switch on soft selection, you'll notice there are some gray vertices in there. They're not going to be moving as far. And that can be controlled using the fall off of your brush. Now we have constrained. This causes tools to only be applied to the current tessellation level. Now we haven't really played much with tessellation levels, but over here we have the ability to increase and decrease our tessellation. Let me go ahead and show our wireframe real quick. Now I'll go ahead and click Increase Tessellation, and this adds vertices. Are you sure? Check the log for terrain materials that, uh, that will require rescaling. I'm not actually going to go through with this, but this will add more tessellation to our terrain if you just happen to need more detail. But just be really careful about clicking that too many times. Now down from here, we have Strength, Radius, and Fall Off. These directly control your brush. So you can control the strength of your brush, the radius of it, the fall off, which is the kind of softening effect around it. You can have mirroring. Now you can mirror along any axis you want. This can be kind of cool. Really nice if you really have to have a uh, symmetrical layout to your level. So here you can see I, I see two brushes. And as I paint, let's just actually switch over to the paint tool. It'll be easier to show. And I'll make my brush a bit bigger. So now I'm raising up two areas. If you have a really big map and you want to do the same thing to both sides, say for a capture the flag map, this can save you a little bit of time. All right, so there's a quick look at our tools, at our settings. If we come down here underneath import, export, we can import a height map or a terrain. We can also export it out. We can, uh, there's height map only. If this is selected, import and export will only work on the height map. If a layer is selected, import and export the alpha map for that layer. Now, just kind of moving along from here, we have some different brush sizes that we can click. And if we just jump over to our tessellation, increase is going to increase the level of tessellation by a factor of two in each dimension. And as I mentioned, you really want to be careful about doing that too many times, because of course you can end up with a lot of vertices, which can eventually lead to instability. 
Now, of course, if you add too many, you can use decrease to pull that down. Now, I'm going to click decrease first, and we'll click yes, and you see that my terrain gets a lot simpler. Click increase, and there you go. And let's try increasing just one more time, and you can see we have a lot more terrain uh, patch detail to work with. So there is a quick look at the various tools of terrain. From here, the, the best thing you can do is really get in, create a terrain, and start adding some stuff to it. There actually, oh, there's one more thing I want to add. I was so excited, but there's one more thing I want to put in that I'm even more excited about showing you. So let's jump back into terrain. Let me make sure that my wireframe is off. Let's talk about adding a deco layer. I can't believe I almost forgot that. That's crazy. Now, back here inside the content browser. Let's add a tree. Now, let's see here. Don't I have a burnt tree in here somewhere? Burnt tree. And let's make sure we're searching through all assets. Here we go. S-U-N tree. Uh, and it's under S-M burnt tree 01. Now, this is under a package that I believe is called U-N trees. Yeah, here we go. What I'm going to do is right-click and fully load that package. Please remember, anytime you're grabbing something out of the content browser for use in terrain, remember to fully load the package. Now I'm going to select this tree. Let's close out of the content browser for now. I'm going to right-click and create a new deco layer, and we'll give this a name of trees. And click OK. Now I still have that tree mesh selected. Let's right-click and choose Add Selected Decoration. Now something kind of interesting. If we jump into our properties and expand the terrain properties, we now have a deco layer. It has an index of zero. Its name is trees, and it actually has a static mesh applied within it. Now that's all well and good. If we step down inside the factory, we can see the static mesh component factory, and there's our burnt tree mesh. However, our density is currently set to zero. So let's fix that by setting the density up to one. I'm gonna make sure that my tool is selected for paint and let's pull down our radius and we'll boost the fall off just a bit. And let's go ahead and turn off mirroring. Oh, let's also adjust our scale. So min scale and max scale, let's set both of these to one. And you'll see we have some trees. So as I paint by holding control, dragging with left mouse, I'm dropping trees right down on the surface. If I want more trees, I can increase the density, though do be careful with this. So let's say 1.5 and we have more trees. Now I can right click and choose play from here and we're already starting to get a spooky little forest. And those do collide so you notice I, I can get snagged on them. Now that's pretty much everything that you really need to get you started with terrain. We've shown how you can sculpt it, a variety of the tools you need to change its shape, we've shown how you can apply textures and paint textures on it, we've shown how you can apply decorations. Really, at this point, your next best thing would be to get in here and play. And don't forget, when you're playing with terrain, probably one of the most important things, in my humble opinion, you can do, and I'm being at least mostly serious here, is if you go under Actor Classes, expand down under Navigation Point, grab UT Vehicle Factory, and by all means, test out your terrain by dropping a scorpion on it. Because you got to do that. And let's use Play from here, and we can hit E, and now we can drive around on our terrain. So that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.